MQTT community. My name is Maggie Erber and I'm a product manager here at HiveMQ. Today, I'd like to introduce you an easy way to seamlessly integrate IoT data with Apache Kafka. So let's get started. Here at HiveMQ, we see many companies that are implementing IoT use cases and are looking at the possibilities of integrating MQTT and Kafka to process their IoT data. While Kafka and MQTT have different design goals, both work extremely well together. The question is not Kafka versus MQTT, but how to integrate both worlds together for an IoT end-to-end -end data pipeline. There are multiple different architecture approaches out there that build some type of bridge to forward messages to and from Kafka. We now will have a closer look at our HiveMQ Enterprise extension for Kafka. The HiveMQ Enterprise extension for Kafka benefits from the native implementation of both MQTT and Kafka protocol. The implemented native Kafka protocol inside the HiveMQ broker allows for seamless integration of MQTT messages with a single Kafka cluster or multiple Kafka clusters at the same time, while still fully supporting 100% of the entire MQTT3 and MQTT5 specification. With this, the extension for Kafka assures all delivery guarantees of both protocols. Ingesting IoT data from potential millions of IoT devices to a limited number of Kafka topics is possible just like the distribution of Kafka records to multiple IoT devices. Let's set up HiveMQ with the HiveMQ Enterprise extension for Kafka and stream data between IoT devices and backend systems. So here's what you need. A running HiveMQ instance, Professional or Enterprise Edition, the Enterprise extension for Kafka, a running Kafka, and an MQTT client to generate IoT data. For example, the MQTT CI, but any other solution can be used here. I'm running everything on my local machine for this demonstration. But of course, you can set up everything on different servers and connect them via the internet. So here's what we will see. We have MQTT devices that are publishing data with the topic cars, group one, their specific ID and speed to HiveMQ. The messages are then forwarded via the enterprise extension for Kafka to our Kafka to the topic speed. We will also see the way back to the devices. We will read messages from the Kafka topic config changes and distribute them to the devices. So, I assume that you have a running HiveMQ, like I have here, that is um, a running HiveMQ 4.2.1. To enable the HiveMQ Enterprise Extension for Kafka, you have to download it from our website. I assume you already have done this. Then you'll get the HiveMQ Extension for Kafka as a folder like this. If you go inside, and open the Kafka configuration example XML file, then you will find a file that is similar to this. I already adapted the MQTT topic filters and Kafka topics here, so the extension will forward the MQTT messages to the right Kafka topic. The first step is to define a Kafka cluster here. We will use the localhost IP address and the default port for Kafka in the configuration. And then we can define two different topic mappings. The first one is the MQTT to Kafka mapping. So that means MQTT messages that are published to an MQTT topic to HiveMQ will be forwarded to a specific Kafka topic that we also can set here. So that means all messages that are published with the MQTT topic, cars, group one, then something and speed, will be forwarded to the Kafka topic speed. Down here we have the other way, the Kafka to MQTT mapping. That means all the messages from a Kafka topic will be forwarded and distributed to different MQTT topics. That means the messages that are read from the Kafka topic test config changes will be forwarded and distributed to the MQTT topics Cars group 1 car id1 config and cars group 1 car id2 config. Important, rename this file if you have configured it 
to Kafka configuration and delete the dot example. Now it's renamed and ready to start. To start the hyphen q Kafka extension, we have to copy the whole folder with the configuration to our hyphen q setup into the extension folder. If we now have a look into our terminal, we will see that hyphen q registers the hyphen q ex enterprise extension for Kafka and will start the two topic mappings we configured in the Kafka configuration. So let's have a look into our control center. The hyphen q control center is running here. We see that we now have one subscription that is the Kafka extension that reads from the topic we configured in the Kafka extension configuration. And we also have the Kafka extension here as hyphen q control center page that displays everything that happens with the Kafka extension. So above here we have the MQTT2 Kafka mapping and down here the Kafka2 MQTT mapping. So switch back to our terminals. Next to our hyphen q we have the Kafka running and down here we have a Kafka consumer that consumes messages from the Kafka topic speed and will display them here in the terminal. And we also have a Kafka producer that produces Kafka records to the Kafka topic test config changes. To see that the whole setup is working, we will connect to MQTT clients and publish data with the MQTT topic speed. The first MQTT client will publish with the topic car ID 1 to speed and the second one with car ID 2 to speed. And we see here in the Kafka consumer the messages are there. To test the way back we will use the Kafka producer. But first we have to subscribe with the topic filter that matches the topics where the messages will be forwarded to. So now I create a Kafka record with the payload or with the value send interval to 30 seconds and we see that it is distributed to both MQTT clients. So now that we have seen that the setup works with single MQTT and Kafka messages, we now will generate a little bit load to HiveMQ and our Kafka. Here I have a setup that will start 25 MQTT clients that start publishing 100 messages per second per client. The messages that are published to HiveMQ will then be forwarded to our Kafka. So now we will see 2.5k messages per second that are published to HiveMQ and then are written to Kafka. And down here we see that the same amount of messages is pulled from the Kafka and is distributed to our MQTT clients. Because we have configured that the messages that are pulled from Kafka should be distributed with two different MQTT topics, we see twice the amount of MQTT messages than the amount of pulled messages from Kafka. I really hope you enjoyed this little video about HiveMQ and Apache Kafka. Like always, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us.